Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the Beretta M9A4. Now, those of you who follow my channel, you know that I'm a very big fan of the Beretta uh, M9 pistol. And this is the latest iteration. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time going over the history of the M9 due to the fact that we just put out a video not too long ago on the history of the 92 series. I just do want to go over just a little bit of a quick overview of where we started and where we're at right now. Again, the baseline pistol for uh, this uh, is the M9, M9 pistol or the 92 FS pistol, which is what we see here. This was a standard U.S. military issue from 1985 until, I'm not sure off the top of my head, when it was replaced by the, the, uh, the SIG uh, M18 or the SIG P320. Now, the standard military pistol, as we see here, was the M9 pistol. And this was the TDP uh, M9 pistol, which was made for the U.S. military. There was a next iteration for the Marine Corps, the M9A1. Now, the M9A1, this was not a TDP pistol. This was a commercial off-the-shelf pistol with some improvements that the Marine Corps had wanted. So if we take a look at the two, we're going to see what the major differences are. First, you have the M9A1 has the accessory rail. Next thing you're going to see is the difference in the checkering. You're going to see a much more aggressive back strap and front strap on there. And you're also going to see a improved or stronger trigger guard on the M9A1. Now, another benefit of the M9A1 being a COTS gun, it was able to get all the updates of the locking block. So there's been three or four different generations of uh, inc increasing uh, the durability and the life of the locking block that this had to stay with the original locking block because it was in the TDP. And the U.S. government was happy with what it was, and uh, they never wanted to change it. So all the guns that were delivered to the military as the U.S. M9 had to have all those original parts. Well, the M9A1 was able to get the benefit of the new locking block, which had, I'd say, at least 25 to 50 percent more life on it than the than the original one did. So it, it was able to have that. But otherwise, the pistols were the same. Now, for as far as parts compatibility, exact same slide barrel. Um, there was no parts that were on this. All the all the all the, the changes that were made were made to the machining of the frame. So all the parts compatibility between the two were the same. Well, the next iteration we had was the M9A3. Well, the M9A3, I don't have one here, uh, unfortunately. But the M9A3 was not a U.S. government designation. It was the M9A3. It was what Beretta gave to the government to say, you know, this would, this would pretty much cure most of your issues that you have with a modular handgun. And basically what you had was a, a, a new frame where it was more easy for the... Uh, for the person to get a hold of uh, with smaller hands. You had some modifications to the uh, barrel, which was, again, you had a threaded barrel on it. You had uh, an improved safety on the rear, which is more angled upward, so you'd be able to pull back without uh, engaging the safety and having the safety come on. Uh, you had the flat, dark earth. You had the accessory rail. Uh, so you had a lot of benefits to the M9A3. Well, when the U.S. government looked at that. They said, no, uh, we, we want a whole new weapons pro program, which ended up going with a striker fired a pistol. So this is the latest and the greatest. This is the M9A4. Now, the M9A4, again, is Beretta's M9A4, not the U.S. government's. And we have the next generation pistol. And some of the things that you're going to see most uh, significant about the M9A4 is optics ready. We have the, uh, we have the Delta Point Pro uh, Leupold optic on here. We also have a much shorter trigger reset. So if you pull the trigger, pull the slide back, you have a much shorter reset than you do on the normal pistol. Sights. You do have tritium night sights on here. And again, you have like you have with the M9A1, you have removable front and rear, so you can put different sights on here as well. You do have forward slide serrations on here. And again, threaded barrel. Now we have this, we have the Silencer Co. Octane 9mm uh, suppressor on, on this one. Now for as far as the slide, the safety was concerned, this one is a G. The G meaning it's decock only, so you drop down, Decock goes back up, so your first shot's the long drawn double action. Then after that, you go back into single action. The accessory rail, 1913 rail. And the light we have on here is a TLR1 by Streamlight, which is an incredibly bright 1000 lumen LED light. And of course, this is flat darker, so it would look nice with it. You do have the M9A1 improved trigger guard where it's much heavier. Now, for as far as the grip is concerned, where things get a little bit more interesting too, you'll see that there's, unlike the, the, the M9 pistol, you do have a more of a divot in here. Well, what that was for, it allows somebody with shorter hands to get in there to be able to reach the trigger uh, on the double action mode. Now we had two different types of, 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 of grips on here. 
This one here is a large wraparound grip. This is for somebody who has large hands, so it fits me perfect. Now for somebody who has smaller hands, you have basically the same kind of grips that you would have on a standard M9 pistol, which would decrease that width so you'd be able to, to, to grab the pistol. Now the magazine, you have an oversized magazine release button, which is also reversible. This is really a great uh, enhancement on here because it enables somebody with uh, their hands not to have to remove their hand from the grip to be able to drop the magazine, which uh, with when you deal with the, the standard one, it's a little bit more difficult. You do have to reverse your hand on there to be able to reverse or drop the magazine. Now the magazines is another, another great improvement. You have a 18 shot magazine versus a 15 shot magazine that you have with the M9. However, all the magazines for the M9, 15 shot magazines, 10 shot magazines, they're all compatible with the, with the M9A4. So let's talk about the range. First time we went to the range, I, I put the, uh, the site on here. And again, this is probably the largest of any of the, the sites that, that were available. Now, when we first shot it, we did have a little bit of an issue with uh, a very light ejection pattern, and we did have some failures to uh, feed. Uh, I contacted uh, Beretta USA about that, talked to uh, my friend Gabriel Deplano over there, who I've known since we both had hair, uh, and he basically had said, the chances are this pistol missed the mating process for basically where they, this, the, the manually the, the slide is cycled, so you had Cerakote on the, on the slide and then the frame, so there was some friction there. So I basically went back out again, took the sight off, fired probably two, 300 rounds, got everything worked in well, put the sight back on, shot perfect. So this one just, this one, this one did have to break in a little bit. Now, for as far as uh, reliability, let's take this thing to the range and we'll see how it shoots.
Of course, we see this one shot suppressed and unsuppressed. As you can see from the target, this thing shot beautifully. It's typically what you would expect from a Beretta. The ammunition that we used on here was several different kinds. We used some of the Norma 124 grain full metal jacket, uh, which is a good plus P type cartridge. We used some of the SIG M17, which is basically the M882 ball, uh, which is the military round. We used some Black Hills 115 grain full metal jacket, and then we did some, some SIG Beak round in here as well. And everything we put in this gun, it shot perfectly. Now, for as far as the evolution of the Beretta pistol, now some people want to say that this is outdated because the military is looking at, at striker fired pistols. Well, I'm sorry, I don't think this is an outdated pistol. I think this is just as relevant today as it always was. There are different options now. You do have people who like striker fired, but you do like the people that do have the, uh, the double single as well. Uh, for the most part, for me, I have no problem because when I would draw this pistol out when I carried it, I always cocked the hammer back as I pulled it out, so I was in single action to begin with. And of course, when you would carry decock safety off, that's how I would carry it anyways. So you still have that long double action pull if you so chose to use it. Now, for as far as reliability is concerned, you know, this the top slide with it, the open injection port has always been one of the biggest at, biggest points for the M9 type pistols is because there's no failures to eject because there's nothing in the way. The only way you're going to get a failure to eject on here is if you have a underpowered cartridge. It's not, not going to slide back far enough. That is the only way you're going to get a failure to uh, eject with this pistol. Reliability is stellar. Uh, pretty much regardless of what kind of projectile you put in here, it's going to feed. Uh, the only cartridges I think I've ever had any kind of difficulty with in a Beretta were really short, stubby ones that didn't have much of an ogive on them, uh, so they didn't feed properly, uh, but that was very, very rare. So I do believe this pistol is going to be going further. Uh, again, we have uh, the, th the other threaded barrel, um, and those of us who are in free states where we can have uh, sound suppressors, this pistol suppresses very easily. Um, you know, again, with the open injection port, the only problem that you may run into is after a few magazines, you may have quite a bit of, uh, of, of soot, gunpowder residue on the front here. So you may have to uh, clean that off a little bit. You know, disassembly, it's the same as any standard Beretta. Check, make sure that it's empty. Drop your magazine. You have to do something latch release lever. Push inward on your, your, your latch release. Drop it down, forward. And as you can see, we have basic M9. We do have a plastic spring guide on here. Another point of contention. Uh, many people would say on the commercial off-the-shelf pistols, well, I want a metal one. Well, it doesn't really matter because this is a no-stress part. All this does is keep the spring in alignment. The only way you're going to have a problem with a, uh, a polymer spring guide is if you were to fire full auto excessively, and we saw that with Glocks. So you would never run into that as an issue with an M9. Pull your barrel right out. As you can see, the barrel is coated as well. And this does have the most modern version of the locking block. We can tell because we have that angular cut right here. And also we have the smaller of the plungers. Um, the original one was a larger plunger. This one here is smaller. Uh, so you give more you give more uh, more meat on the sides there. You have a stress relief on the locking block with the circular cut here, so it's not so it's not squared off. Again, major, major improvement, which unfortunately uh, the US government never went to with the M9. But again, the Marines were able to with the M9. Uh, A1 because again it was not a TDP gun so they could have all the updates on it but again all the parts that were on the M9A1 were compatible with that of the M9 so if the M9A1 had to go in for overhaul they could put one of the original logging blocks in it or any of those other parts and it would work just fine so what we have here with the sound suppressors we have one hell of a, uh, of, a of a system so we have suppressed, we have flashlight. You can also get laser sight on here if you chose. You, even, even the laser max sight that I worked on uh, when I first got into the industry could go into here. So you could even have a laser uh, on the front as well. This pistol is as modular and it's as up-to-date as anything that you would have on the market today. Um, MSRP of $1,099. Uh, again, for a modern pistol, optics ready, tritium night sights, threaded barrel. This will do out of the box anything that you need it to do. Comes in a nice little plastic case here. A uh, nice little cardboard box with a target on it, so you don't have to waste it. You can use a target. And overall, I said this is great. And I tell you, the trigger with the with the, with the short reset makes a nice difference as well. This is probably the best trigger that Brett has ever put out on a combat grade pistol. But overall, you're looking at the you know, standard uh, specifications: nine by nineteen caliber, uh, barrels five point one inches with a half by twenty eight thread, so it's a common thread. 
Uh, you're looking at a 15 and an 18 shot magazine height, 5.4 inches, overall length 8.7, width 1.5, sight radius 6.3 inches from the back to the front. Uh, and again, 33.4 ounces, slightly heavier than a standard M9, again, because you have more meat on there uh, for your accessory rail. And, you, and of course, you have more weight uh, due to the more aluminum for the trigger guard. But overall, very, very similar. So any of you guys who are looking for any kind of target, steel targets, uh, you can take a look at the uh, our challenge targets that we use on there. We have a blast with those things. Those make shooting for us a hell of a lot more fun. Uh, we do have a code for that, SAS, and it'll give you 10% off of all steel targets. So if you're looking for any steel targets, go give uh, them a try and, and maybe you can save some money as well. I hope you guys do enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better share. Thank you.